Hey everyone, hope you're well. I'm gonna do um, a nice video today on the process and how I get from A to B and, and finish a project. When I was a young designer slash illustrator, um, I'd have given anything to see this, to, to know how, it, how you go from one point all the way through to the finished product. Um, we all do it differently. That's the, that's the key thing. We all set things up slightly differently. Um, but I found the way I do it works really well for me. Um, and I hope that you get something from it and, and, and even just the smallest tip um, will, be, will be great. So as you might have guessed from the thumbnail, we're going to be drawing a chair and a little scene today. The chair in question is going to be this one. And I thought I'd just introduce it. It's the Barcelona chair by Lud Ludwig Mies van der Rohe. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, and I wish I owned one, which I don't, but I wish I did. And with that, let's get drawing. So the first thing I'll do when I start a piece is find some references, often from books, from Pinterest. So this is the Barcelona chair that I'm looking at now. It's got very nice geometry. And if you see down the legs of the chair, it has really nice curves. What I'll try and do is I'll try and mirror some of that geometry in, in the artwork that I put in the backgrounds of the pictures. So often there's a lot of semicircles, rectangles, lines. Um, I find that this kind of artwork really lends itself to being quite small um, because it is in background. Um, but it also adds to a general tone to the illustration that I'm working on. And then, yeah, because, you know, everyone loves a plant, I think having a plant in there, again, it just softens it all down a little bit and makes it very homely. Um, it was a nice place to sit. So once I've got the general elements that I'm going to have in the photograph, what I'll do is I'll put them on a page and I'll just try and find a composition that sort of sits quite nicely. To help me do that, I often draw like a line, like a diagonal line down, down one side. I find this really just helps me anchor things and get them sort of lined up. And it's obviously important just to mention it's not always a diagonal line. Sometimes I use more of a traditional sort of grid. So once I'm happy with the composition, I'll then make the picture. So I'm going to zoom through that a little bit um, and I'll see you on the other side. <laughs> So there you go, the finished piece. Um, I'm really happy with it. I think the scene's beautiful and I think we've done a good job of the Barcelona chair. I think that's done it proud. The next step is to move it from here onto the computer into Photoshop. And then from there, we'll add some bleed and into InDesign. Export your illustration from Procreate and open it up into Photoshop. Then create a new file in Photoshop 
and this is the one that we'll use to create the artwork. So go ahead and create a new file in Photoshop and then what we're going to do is add some bleed. So we're going to add three millimeters to each side. So six in total to the width and six in total to the height. So if your file is 210 millimeters squared, it should actually be 216 millimeters squared. And the reason we add bleed is that when it goes to the printing press, if there's any movement, any sort of um, shifting from one side to the other, it means that we can accommodate that with the extra bit of picture that we've added. So if you now go ahead and press create, what I'll do is make our file and then what we're going to do is click back to our artwork file and then we're going to go up to window and we're going to arrange two up vertical, which means that we'll have them side by side. The next thing to do is to move our layers from our artwork file into our new file. A good tip I can give you is that when you drag the layers from one file to another, if you hold down shift, what Photoshop will do is put them dead center in the new file. Then go back up to window and arrange and consolidate all tabs, which means you'll just see one of your tabs. Then go ahead and select the bottom layer. So in my case, it's background and expand it, make it so that it fills the white bit of the bleed. Now on this file, that's obviously very easy. On other files, you'll have things that go full bleed. So you'll have um, lines that bleed off the edge or you'll have larger bits of image. With that, you're gonna need to try and expand the background in some way. Now I'll go ahead and save it down. I'm gonna save mine as a PSD, but feel free to save it as a JPEG, TIFF, anything you want really. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open InDesign. This can be done in Illustrator, but I prefer InDesign. And I'm gonna add my page width. Now notice I'm putting in 210 millimeters, even though my file I'm gonna bring in is 216. And the reason I do that is further down, there is a section that you can add the bleed. So I'm gonna add six pages because I've got other bits of art that I'm gonna print. Um, I can remove all the margins because we don't need those. And there you are. So there's the bleed and slug section. We can ignore slug but we do need to put our bleed on. So add three millimeters in there. Now occasionally a printer will ask for five millimeters, but that's usually for larger artwork. Mine's only 210 millimeters, so it will be three. So go ahead and press create, and you'll see that we have a six page document with a three millimeter bleed. That's the red line going around. And then you're gonna go up to file and place, and then you need to locate your file. So chair one, .psd for me and go into the top left hand corner right onto the bleed and click just once and it'll automatically add your picture to your page and now you can see if you press w what will happen is you'll see just your artboard and then if you press it again it will reveal the bleed again so you can preview it just by pressing w once you're happy with your artwork we need to export it into a pdf so if you go up to file and down to adobe pdf presets um, and there's a few options here, but if you go to PDFX 2008 and click it, what you'll get is your export window. So name it and, and choose where you're gonna save it. Press save. And then you're gonna get a window to do some extra settings. So we need to put all the pages. Um, most of this needs to be left blank because we're not making any sort of digital PDF. But we need, we need to go to compression and in compression, just check that your bicubic down sampling is 300 pixels per inch. Then go into marks and bleeds. Now this is important. You need to, you can put all printed marks on, but we don't need to. But we need to put our crop and bleed marks on. Now crop is where the printer will cut it and bleed is the edge of your actual file. And what we'll do is we'll add use document bleed settings on there and that'll just pull through the bleed from the, the file. Rest of it should be okay, so we'll quickly go through all of that and export it. Then we're going to open up Adobe Acrobat and we're going to preview the file that we've just created. And you can see from there we have two sets of tick marks in the, in the corners. You have the bleed, which is the ones on the right on the outside, and then you have the trim, which is inside. Trim being the one that's going to tell the printer where to cut, and bleed is going to tell the printer where the edge of your artwork is. So for my digital printing, I go to printed.com. I find they have a good stock. Um, and when I print on their Tintoretto Gesso stock, that it doesn't come back too shiny. And I also have a really nice texture to it. I find often with um, digital printing um, on certain stocks, it can come back really shiny and looking a little cheap. Um, and I prefer to have that kind of tactile sort of texture in there as well on, on the prints. Um, so with that, yeah, I, I use printed.com. So let's have a look. 
So go up to products um, and what you'll see is quite a few different types. So everything from postcards, business cards, stickers. We have fine art prints. Um, but the one we're going to use is leaflets and flyers. And the reason for this is that the type of size that I'm printing at, I don't need anything like bigger. And it means that I can yeah, technically use a leaflet size. So if we click on luxury leaflets, and in there you'll see we have different sizes. So looking down, yep, so we have a 210 millimeter square, which is good. You can also do like A6 mini prints and things like that. But if we go through, we will print one side. I'm gonna have 10 prints, and there's gonna be six different designs, um, which I'm gonna do. So the total quantity is 60, and that updates on the product summary to the side. Now, this is an important part, which paper to use. Now, I like to use Tintoretto Gesso. Reason being is that it's got a really lovely texture. So then we're gonna go for a paper weight of 250 GSM, square corners, and no envelopes. Click continue. And then what happens is you'll go through to a upload artwork page. So first things first, I'm just gonna add a reference in there. So mal made prints and then I'm going to upload my artwork and I can do this by clicking the button or just dragging it in so if you look for the PDF we created there we go and we drag that onto there and what it's going to do is upload and it should upload one file with six pages yep there we go it's going to create a preview so it's always worth just checking through your preview um, and just seeing that things are where they should be this is the last chance you're going to get before before the prints are done then just add them to basket, do some paying, and then it's about waiting really. So let's see what turns up. What's left is for me to take a few photographs of this and get them from my store, which they now are. Um, so feel free to go and have a look at malmade.com. And if you enjoy this content, please do let me know if you want more of it through subscribing, likes, and of course comments. Until next time, cheers.